How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates This will be hard. Fossil fuels are ubiquitous, much like water. From toothbrushes to clothes, common items contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Virtually everything we use involves fossil fuels in production and transportation. Their low cost and abundance make them pervasive. Oil, for example, is used globally in massive quantities daily. Its low cost contributes to its widespread use. While the problem is vast, it's not insurmountable. By utilizing existing clean sources and advancing zero carbon energy, we can reduce net emissions to zero. The challenge is making clean approaches economically competitive with current technology. Urgency is paramount, and we must act swiftly to address climate change. History is not on our side. It's not just the rich world. The pursuit of a better life globally is escalating energy demand and carbon emissions. Despite nearly 40% of emissions being produced by the wealthiest 16%, energy consumption and the global population's rise will significantly escalate carbon emissions. The adoption of new energy sources and technologies has historically taken decades. Unlike past transitions, the shift to renewable energy requires an unprecedented pace due to environmental considerations. This requires a level of complexity in public policy and technology not previously encountered. We need to enable low-income individuals to climb the economic ladder without exacerbating climate change. It's essential to achieve zero carbon emissions. Coal plants are not like computer chips. Unlike microprocessors, energy technology hasn't experienced exponential progress. Fuel economy has only improved by less than a factor of three in over a century. The energy industry is massive, worth around $5 trillion annually. Its size and complexity make it resistant to rapid change, unlike the more agile software industry. The drug and vaccine industry faces more challenges but benefits from lower production costs once a working product is developed. In contrast, the energy industry presents significant upfront capital costs that persist. Safety concerns and risk aversion in the energy sector contribute to the slow adoption of new technologies. Despite the need for change, societal incentives favor sticking with familiar, albeit harmful, practices. Changing these incentives to create a reliable, safe, and fossil fuel-independent energy system poses significant difficulties. But it's essential to address the challenges facing the energy industry and move towards a sustainable future. Our laws and regulations are so outdated. Our laws and regulations are so outdated. They weren't designed to address climate change and are limiting our progress towards zero emissions. For example, the Clean Air Act, America's most well-known air quality law, barely mentions greenhouse gases at all. It was passed in 1970 to address local air pollution, not rising temperatures. Similarly, fuel economy standards like CAFE were adopted in the 1970s to address rising oil prices and promote fuel efficiency. They weren't designed to address the need for electric vehicles. Our approach to climate and energy is also impacted by the election cycle. With each new administration, priorities change, making it hard for researchers and entrepreneurs to make progress. Current policies will have a negligible impact on future emissions. They're projected to reduce emissions by only 5% of projected U.S. emissions in 2030. We need updated policies that will make a significant impact on reducing emissions. It won't be easy, but it's possible. There isn't as much of a climate consensus as you might think. Climate change is a real threat that requires urgent action. But not everyone agrees on the best way to address it. Some argue that investing in climate solutions is not worth the cost. 
but unless we act fast, the consequences will be dire. Climate change will make most people worse off, and it will hit the poorest the hardest. We need to prioritize it as much as health and education. We have some of the tools we need to address climate change, but not all of them. There is still much work to be done in science and engineering. Global cooperation is essential to address climate change. But it's challenging to get every country on board. The Paris Agreement was a starting point that proved global cooperation is possible. But there is still much work to be done. To address climate change, we need to accomplish something we have never done before. We need to build a consensus that doesn't exist and create public policies to push a transition that would not happen otherwise.